Hey everyone, this is Madeline Frittle with the Empowered PCS. I'm here in Jacksonville, Florida, and today we are going to talk to you about selling your home uh, as a military family, what that looks like, how to prep for it, and how we work with military families to make sure you're getting the best timeline that works for you. Hey guys, it's Melinda Cruzy Departa in San Diego, and uh, like she said, we're going to get into getting ready to sell your house. First, I'll let Christina introduce herself. Hey, Christina Zimmerman here with Whidbey Island, Washington and the Florida Panhandle around Pensacola area. Nice to see everyone again. Hey guys, okay, back to what do we do? You know you've got orders coming up. You may already have them, you may not, but you know that you're not staying at this duty station and you were fortunate, you bought a house, uh, everything's good. So what are we gonna do? Uh, you've watched all the HGTV shows and uh, it isn't quite like that. And we also know that typically a military family moving is not going to want to put a lot of money into their house. You're not going to redo the kitchen and the bath to sell it. You're going to get it clean and you're going to get out. So we're going to first, you know, first thing we look for, we walk up to your house to, to meet you. We're looking at your landscaping and your front door. We're going to make sure that those are clean, that they're tidy, that it looks as pretty as it can. Um, sometimes flowers can do wonders. Sometimes it's not the season for flowers. Uh, we're going to have the door with fresh paint. We make sure the, the door handle, the knob, uh, the, the doorbell work and they don't stick when we go to open them up because that's your first impression mm -hmm. and you don't get that second chance. Actually, I'm going to back up. Your first impression is what we take for photographs. So uh, because everybody's going to see it online before they come to see it in person, especially now. Gotta have that curb appeal, right? So we got to have the curb appeal. You've got to have professional photos. So when you're talking to your agent, make sure they're going to do that. So that's part of the interviewing process. But if we go to, okay, what are you going to do? Um, you're going to declutter. So you probably keep a nice neat home or you may have a crazy house with animals and kids and all of that. For most of us, we're going to take out almost half of what we've got and we're going to either put it in boxes or we're going to put it in our storage unit. We're also going to depersonalize the home. You may have, um, you know, you may have some military things up. Military is cool because most of your, our clients are going to be coming in, in military. But like I had a guy who had his, his sword, his machete, uh, his guns. We've got to lock all that stuff up. We've got to make sure it's not accessible. And, and they may, and you may have a lot of awards and it tells a lot of information about you. Yeah. We don't want the public to see all that information. It's okay that they walk in and they, and usually my, my military buyers walk in and they're like, oh cool, it's a Marine's house. Oh cool, it's a Navy house. Oh look, we served on the same ship, but we've got to depersonalize it. And like pictures of the kids and the family and all that, because they need to imagine themselves in your house. And only 10% of the population can get beyond what they see in the house. So like it, I'm in my office and it, there's a lot of stuff that would have to go here before I sell because it's just, it's too much personalized to me. And you um, think too about having like, if you've got, you know, your, your um, diploma on the wall or whatever paraphernalia you might have, paraphernalia, I don't know if that's the right word. <laughs> Whatever, whatever you ha might have displayed. That's too. We're in California and Washington. <laughs> <laughs> That's there you go. Um, but whatever you might have, if it says your full name and someone can look you up, they might get more information on you than you want. And when you're selling a house, you need to have a little bit of negotiation power. And if they know a little bit, some backstory, maybe they know where you're from. We just don't want them to know. We want them to see the house as their own and not know really who the sellers are other than what your legal names are on title. They'll actually take that to advantage. I've had, I've had clients that have seen something and they realize where they serve mm -hmm. and they've gone and checked out that person with their chief. Mm -hmm. um, because wow. There's a lot of people that are more loose and looking for the upper hand than, than we are. So yeah, that's a really good point. You, you don't want all that info up there. Um, and then the, the other, the, there's actually three other things. Um, repairs so if you remember when you bought it you did an inspection i like my clients to head off any potential problems at the past so most of you have home warranties this is the time to dig in and use them if you had something broken that you didn't get fixed you know you know the dishwasher doesn't work well let's get that working let's make sure everything's as good as it can be out of the gate clean your furnish filters wash out the gutters make sure your house is in the best repair you possibly can so the transaction goes smoothly because we're going to talk in a minute about timelines. And so we just don't need these hiccups in other areas for negotiation. 
And you think it's likely, it's likely cheaper to do it before it's on the market and before it's an inspected like issue. Mm -hmm. You fix it prior to that. You can hire whoever you want to fix it. Once you're under contract and you have an inspection that says the dishwasher doesn't work, it's a licensed repairman who probably costs $125 an hour or whatever. Okay. It can escalate. The other, um, the other big thing is that when you're working with your agent to set the price, keep in mind that this isn't the time to just float a price and see what happens. Our objective when we're dealing, when we're PCSing, we have to move. You're a motivated seller. So you have to release that this is your home and where you've created all these amazing family member memories and realize that this is a product that you're selling. So you need to hone in a price and ask them, what is the best price that will cause this to sell in my time frame? Because that's a balance. Um, and pricing it right out of the gate, we know from years and years of research that it's much better to price it right out of the gate and get yourself in escrow and get moving than it is to price it high and then see what happens. That just doesn't, it doesn't work. Things have changed because buyers have so much data at their fingertips. Mm -hmm. And then the final thing is availability making it as available as possible to show. Um, work, with your, work with your agent on that, how they can do it. Right now, we're recording this during the pandemic. I think Madeline will talk about that a little bit. So showings are very different right now, yet when we're in a no more normal time, there's a lot of things that we can do to kind of bunch the showings together for you to make as little impact as possible on the family, but you've got to make it as available as possible. I think you were going to talk about pets with showings as well. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting in the room. You might be able to see the little dog over there. Um, <laughs> pets cause, I, like sometimes I've joked that I feel like I'm not a real estate agent. I'm, I'm a pet uh, manager. Yeah. So like I gotta get there and, and put and put the cat in the cage because if the cat gets out, I actually I had a listing that I said, if you let this cat out of the house, you're buying the house. Like it's that <laughs> serious. I had one recently, there were four cats. They all had to be locked in the same bedroom. Like and then there's the dog. Does the dog bite? Does the dog not bite? Does the dog stink? Um, you know, the is there a weird snake? All that kind of stuff. So um, we need to talk about pet management and, if possible, getting you, your kids, and your pets out of the house when we show. So I'm actually a big fan. We can't do them right now. I'm a big fan of open houses for um, my sellers because I can get all those showings in from, from broker caravan on Wednesday or Thursday through the weekend and typically in this market have offers by Tuesday, Wednesday. We have, a, have multiples and we can work the deal and that impacts you as little as possible. Now it won't always be this way. Sometimes we'll have to go 60, 90 days of, of showings, but if we're getting to that, then we probably didn't price your house right anyway. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I was going to get into the process of selling. So once you've got your house ready to go, you've got it listed, goes under contract, what happens next? So I'm sure you remember from when you bought your home, but maybe you've never sold a home before. So um, once you're under contract, it's pretty standard. You're gonna have your inspections and your agent will let you know every step of the way what to expect. So they'll give you your timeline, and we'll walk you through it. Um, but you'll have your inspection, usually takes two to three hours depending on the square footage and the condition of the home. Um, so it's always good to be out of the house during that. So that will get scheduled with you. After the inspections, you might have some repairs to make and your agent can help you with finding a good handyman or a contractor, plumber, whatever you need to get those repairs done. Yeah, I think um, we, t we touched on that in a previous episode talking about having vendors that we trust that, you know, represent our business as well to do the work. Like when you're a seller and you need to fix a dishwasher again, to have someone that you trust to come in and do that work, um, both to the benefit of the seller because it's a good value and a good trustworthy vendor and then also to the buyer we don't want to fix something and not actually fix it yeah and it does make a big difference to have someone recommend someone like that i had a seller who before they had called me went through three plumbers before i got involved and listed the house and 
sent them my plumber who I really like and they were so happy, but you know, it's hard. You don't know who to call sometimes. So having that recommendation can make all the difference. So I want to circle back to something Madeline said it before about doing repairs beforehand. Um, what happens is typically once the repairs get called out from an inspection, you're going to have to use a licensed plumber. Whereas, you know, a lot of times if it's just a P trap or something like that, or, or the toilet bowl or the toilet needs a new um, wax ring, that's mm -hmm. a handyman or even some of our handy spouses. And, yeah. but, but once we get into contract, they're going to want receipts from a professional. Yeah. Uh, so the sprinkler is just aiming at the house and it's as simple as twisting it. You'd have to hire someone if you've done that after you're under contract, but you can do it yourself before you put it on the market. Right. And these are things that you might not think of if you haven't sold a home before. That's why it's good to do a walkthrough through with your agent before. And we can point out the things that we see all the time on home inspections. You know, whether it's um, like you said, the sprinklers pointing the wrong way or, you know, little tiny things that buyers might try and nickel and dime you on or, you know, ask for the moon and the stars. If that's taken care of ahead of time, it'll just be that much better once you're under contract. So walk through with us first. Um, so once you're through the inspection, the repairs, you can expect it, expect the appraisal in most situations. If it's a cash deal, you might not have an appraisal. If it's a VA offer, you're always going to have an appraisal. Um, and the appraisal usually takes 30 minutes to an hour. It can be pretty quick. So it's also good if you're out of the house for that as well. So it will be scheduled with you ahead of time. And then lastly, just pretty much packing. And then right before closing, you'll have your final walkthrough. Some agents do it three days ahead of time. Some do it right before the closing. It just depends, but it'll get scheduled with you. And that's just for the buyer to come in and look at the house and make sure it's in the same condition it was when they made the offer. You know, um, I had a final walkthrough where everything was great. We got into one of the units. It was a fourplex and the ceiling was falling in. And that wasn't there before. And if we had not done that final walkthrough, they would be accepting the home as is once they close and stuff like that. So it's very important for the buyers to do that. And as long as you've been, you know, a good homeowner and you left the house in the condition you would want it when you bought it, you're going to be fine. So it's just them checking. I, I have a question for you too. In California, um, our final walkthrough, like you can't stop your closing because you found the ceiling caving in. It just has to be documented and dealt with legally after close. Now, sometimes we're able to deal with it um, and get it taken care of. And sometimes we just have to close with it like that. And we documented it. What is it like uh, in Florida and Washington? For both states, at least my part of Florida um, and Washington, it's kind of a, another round of negotiations. Mm -hmm. um, Usually we'll get it taken care of ahead of time, but if it's something major like that ceiling, that's not going to get, I mean, we were on our way to closing. So I was standing at the title company still on the phone with the listing agent trying to get it figured out. And it turned into um, the, the seller was just going to give them a check outside of closing and it was all documented and they were going to have it fixed after the fact. So. Yeah, that's that's primarily what what we've done is 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 the damage we found enough to delay closing or figure out like you said negotiate another route put something in escrow um to fix it you know usually the title will hold like twice the amount of the estimate for the fix and then you know once it's fixed then title will release the rest of the money back to the original um seller so it, there's that's why i brought it up because in california they won't do that so oh, you can't or will not hold, they won't hold money after close. Um, yeah. so it's, it's different. And that's why I brought it up because we've got to talk those expectations. Mm -hmm. That's, um, in my experience, they haven't been able to hold it after closing. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, interesting. They can ahead of time, but it's kind of a process because if there's a loan involved, you know, the lender needs to know about that and that's all got to get approved. And right. Then it adds another three days on <laughs> because of TRID. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, there are options and we'll walk you through it. So, you know, if we do, I've had amazing sellers who took great care of the house and they had a plumbing leak right before closing and it leaked through a wall. And it's like, that was not their fault, but we do need to address it. And we've had experience with that as agents. So we'll walk you through what the options are and it'll be okay. Um, and then lastly, closing and closing for selling is a lot quicker in general than buying. So um, you know, there's a lot less to sign and, um, 
you'll get a um, settlement statement prior to closing. So you'll have all of your figures ahead of time. And usually I'll do a net sheet for my sellers before even listing. So they know a general idea of what to expect at closing. And then as we get closer, we'll have a final settlement statement so they can see, okay, this is how much I'll be getting. This is what I can expect at closing. And you know, that way there's no surprises. You can go sign and move on to your next adventure. Celebrate. <laughs> when you, and you talked about um, packing up a little bit and I, I, I'll use that as a bit of a transition and a circle back Melinda with talking about decluttering. If you're going to sell your home, just go ahead and start packing like before you list it, you know, that helps declutter. It saves you some time. Um, Cause once you go under contract, you've got, you know, 30, 45 days to pack up the whole house. Um, but if you're doing military movers and they pack it for you, um, we all know that is a set scheduled timeline. Like you, you choose, they're coming this day and once it's set it's like you better be ready that day because here come people in a truck to take your things away so um that's something we have to work around as agents of military families is working with that timeline to make sure that you know you close on the home either like you sell your home either after the movers have already come or we file a post occupancy agreement which basically says say we close on a Monday, but the movers aren't going to come on till Friday, we'll give you an extra five, six days to stay in the home. The buyers will agree to you as sellers staying in the home five days post closing. And you basically for no, no money, you can stay for five extra days and make sure those movers come. And then you leave and assuming you didn't knock any walls with any tables or chairs on your way out, buyers are happy, sellers are happy and everything works. Um, I don't know if post closing, post occupancies are a little different. We have to have title and, and legal write those here. We can't write those ourselves, but very easily written. We yeah. have an addendum for it, um, okay. in both areas and, you know, we can just work it out before closing and it's all documented as far as if there's going to be any rent back or, um, how long it's going to be. And then you know, will there be renter's insurance or, you know, it's got all those details on there. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, different for every area, but once again, us agents, we work with this, so we know how best to assist you. Okay. So we will work with you guys um, to make sure your timing is right. Um, we talked a little bit earlier about uh, pricing it well and thinking to, um, looking at each market, so San Diego, Jacksonville, would be um, in Pensacola and knowing uh, the timelines for what that looks like. So in Jacksonville, it's very neighborhood specific because we're so spread out, so many different areas. Some will sell in three days, some will take 30 days. And having an agent that knows that, it can work that timeline um, to make sure you're closing in a time that makes sense for your military move is huge. I mean, timing is everything. I'd say right right now, you know, we're sixty days. Yeah, you know, we we're we probably can do in forty five, but I think sixty sixty days is fair. That that's gonna that'll change. But from from open to open to close, sixty days. Um, forty forty five is not uncommon, but it really depends on the price point. And right now, like we said, we were recording during the, the pandemic, so it's harder to show. So everything takes a little longer. It's a little harder to close. So sixty yeah. days. I think more normal markets. We haven't any of us been in a normal market for a long time. I think then we're looking more like we like ninety days. Yeah, and it depends too. I mean, the type of loan we talked about in our last episode being a VA loan uh, depends on your market. Um, my lender can do it in three weeks, but mo usually it's a 45 day loan. So, you know, if, if it's a big military area, which all three of us serve large military areas, you're looking at a 45 day close, you know, and then, so what are your days on market? And that's something we look into and, and work through and make sure, you know, we're working around your, your scheduled mover, your work, we're working around your order date. You know, you have a date to leave uh, Jacksonville on July 1st, but you report by August 1. So we have, you know, 31 days okay. that we want to make sure we close on your house in that time. 
Um, you know, we, we didn't touch on um, the, sometimes I see that the spouse will trail, say the kids are in school and your, your PCS doesn't line up with school schedules. So sometimes the active duty military member will go ahead and then they'll trail and we'll work back at that timeline too. But we need to be in touch right as soon as you know where you're going yep. so that we can help you plan those timelines because they get tight. Like you said, once the movers are scheduled, that's the date. Locked and and we don't want you paying two mortgages. We don't want you, you know, let's say you have moved. We don't, we don't want you dealing with the finances of two households. Right. So getting in touch with us as early as possible to set up that timeline and, and know what your neighborhood or your market looks like is, is your first step to selling other than the, the decluttering Melinda talked about. <laughs> Definitely please do that. Um, the last thing I'll talk about with, with um, moving a bit is if you're transitioning out of the military, the military will do one move for you um, as your final move as part of being a part of the military. So um, we're still dealing with military mover timelines. Um, you know, because you're not active duty anymore, you might not be their priority. So it might take a little bit longer to get that schedule set up. Um, that's things we need to consider and just know when you set up your move on move.mil, right? I think it's move.mil. When you set up your move, you know, <laughs> pay attention to that. Um, it's been a minute since I scheduled one myself, but. Most of the time they just go into the office on base. So, you know, it's a little way. bit easier to do it face to face for sure. Um, and finally, there's a good, there's a good tip right there. It's easier to, if you've never done it before, it's easier to do it face to face if you can. Oh yeah. There are people that are just experts on how to get you a semi truck parked out front of your house. And it's I, the one that moved us from Milton to Jacksonville. He was fantastic. And I sort of want to make him my best friend because it was so simple, but it's not always wow. that simple. <laughs> yeah. He was super nice. <laughs> um, but so we, Melinda touched on it a little bit. Uh, the fact of the matter is we are recording this series um, for now during the COVID-19 pandemic. So things are a little bit different um, in different states, how we show property, how we're able to work um, is it's just different state to state. And it's, you know, you're, we're essential workers here in Florida, but there's still social distancing. There's still, um, you know, concerns with it. And one of the things that we have, and we talked about it earlier before we started recording, we have addenda to protect you as sellers. Um, if your orders get extended because of this pandemic, we can extend your contract um, with that COVID-19 addendum and save you, keep the contract live and save you um, your timeline. If you've got, you know, if your orders to move are locked and you don't get to leave your town anymore, we don't want you to be homeless. So we're going to work on that and use that agenda to protect you. I mean, that's, we've got to. <laughs> okay. We're also going to like, if you do need to get selling now. So right now we have travel orders are supposed to lift June 30th. So if you do need to get selling now, we've also got, uh, at least here in California, I'm sure the same elsewhere, ways that we're protecting you as the homeowner too because you're living in your house and it's not vacant so we're prepared with booties and gloves and masks and there are very strict sanitizing procedures that may fall on you because you're living there yet ways to keep everyone safe and healthy because we understand that that's a real concern too absolutely i mean there's ways to you know as the as the homeowner before you leave the house you can turn on all the lights and unlock all the doors as the agent and their buyers are coming and have them hand sanitize at the door and then ask them not to touch anything throughout the home because the lights are already on and all the doors are already open. Um, there, you know, that's one way to do it. It's not fail proof. You know, it's, it's someone might touch the kitchen cabinet to see what the quality is, but it at least limits the number of surfaces they're touching. And we're seeing a lot of agents, including ourselves doing virtual showing. So we're not having as many people come through the house physically, but they're still getting eyes on everything. Um, and I think that's helped with that as well. Um, and in Washington, we're only allowed to go in the house with one other person at a time. So if we have a couple with us, one of them has to stay in the car and we have to show it one at a time. That way you're kind of keeping that exposure down. Same in California. There's one at a time. There's no children allowed. 
uh, and we, everyone has to fill out a disclosure and we're not, there's no listing agent I know that is allowing anyone in without full pre-approval and proof okay. of funds, which means we've eliminated the looky lose and we've only got real serious buyers coming through your house. So there's some positive things that I actually hope stick around yeah. <laughs> after this. I think we all do. And we're also safer as realtors because we really, really, I mean, I know all three of us work this way, but not everybody works with people they know, but we're very, very protected now that we know these are serious buyers. We're only working with buyers, not shoppers. Yep. So if you're a buyer watching this, that means get your pre-approval as soon as you can because you're going to need it. If you see that perfect house pop up and you don't have it, you might not get to go in and see it and it might be gone by the time you do. So get that pre-approval, that way you're ready to go. Yeah, and I've got one more tip to add on. If you are a seller and you are, you know, you've cleaned your house perfectly, we're so excited, we take the photos and then let's be honest, you then live in the home so your kitchen counters no longer have nothing on them. You know, it's, it's lived in. I suggest like a go sheet. So a list of like 10 things you want to do when you get the notification that you're going to have a showing, I'm going to put the shoes in the closet and I'm going to wipe the counters or whatever your go sheet is. Um, you're not going to, we, we would love it if it got back to photo clean before a showing, but we also realize you live there. So have a go sheet of the things you expect to vacuum or clean or do before you leave, before you grab the kids and the dogs and get out of the house. Um, so that it, sh it shows in its best light. Cause that's like, like Melinda said, it's a first impression thing. So we've got to show the house the best way we can. For a lot of my clients, they have kids and I have kids and dogs. And so I know what it's like, and it's impossible to keep the house show ready all the time but you do get those drive-bys that call your agent and they say hey can we get in right now we're in the driveway and we don't want to stress you out but you don't know when a showing will happen so i suggest for my sellers is keep a laundry basket by the door yes. and if you get that last minute showing throw everything in the basket and go don't worry about putting it away where it goes just toss it in the basket and you can get to it later keep it simple and easy so we don't want to stress you out yeah. um we right. want to make it as easy as we can. Well, that's, that's even what we do. When I show up at a seller's house, whether it's for an open house or a photo shoot, I show up early and I actually gather everything. I am known to put things in your oven, to uh -huh. take stuff off, to put it <laughs> underneath the cabinets. I'll have stuff in the dishwasher. I'll have, have grabbed, you know, every, you'll find things under your cabinets. I try to put it back to normal, but sometimes they'll be like, hey, where'd you put the, the whatever? Because less is more. It's, yeah. it's crazy, but people get, I see people get fixated on what kind of shoes you wear, what your flip flops yeah. are. It's, it's silly, but they get distracted really easily. So yeah, make it as easy on yourself as possible. And I would say, Never turn down a showing unless you're truly like the kids are asleep and you're sick or whatever it is. I, I remember selling a house and I was giving a bridal shower and guess what? They came through during the bridal shower and that's who bought that house and it was in a declining market and we've been on the market like three months. So oh, and right. never, never turn down a showing. That's awesome. That's right. Yeah. Good advice. All right, y'all. Well, we are glad to have talked to you about sellers today. Um, we know we spent most of this series talking about buyers because that is a lot of concern with military folk. But realistically, if you buy a house, you're likely going to sell a house. So we are glad to bring this to you. If you have more questions, reach out to all of us. We'll have our info at the end. Um, and just remember where your boots on the ground in Jacksonville would be and San Diego. So give us a call if you need us.